Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss this example. So here we have two matrix D and D1. Both are defined on the same set X. We have to prove that D and D1 are equivalent matrix if and only if I defined from XD to XD1 and I defined from XD1 to XD. Both are continuous functions. So here we have if and only if things. So that's why we will assume first that D and D1 are equivalent matrix and we will prove that these two functions are continuous functions. So let us start. Let me write. Assume that. Assume that. D and D1 are equivalent matrix on X. It means, let me write. G is open in XD if and only if G is open in XD1. Okay, so by uh, definition of equivalent matrix, we can write this one. If you have any open set in XD, definitely it is an open set in XD1. And if you have any open set in XD1, then it is open in XD. So from D and D1 are equivalent matrix. So that's why we can write this. The same thing can be written as if G is D open set, then G is D1 open. And if G is D1 open set, then G is D open. Getting? So by definition of equivalent matrix, uh, I could write this one. So now what we have to prove? We have to prove that I is continuous. Okay. So actually we have two functions. Both are identity functions. But see, first we will prove this is continuous, then we will go for the second function. To prove that I defined from where to where XD to XD1 is continuous function. Okay, so we have to prove it is a continuous function. So there is one simple way to prove any function is continuous. What we do, we take any open set in codomain and we prove that its inverse image is open in domain. I will do the same. Let G be an open set in XD1. Okay. I'm taking any open set in codomain. Now I have to prove its inverse image is open in domain. So implies so G is open set in XD1, but then by equation star, what can we write? If it is open set in XD1, then it is open in XD. So therefore, G is open in XD. I can write here, uh, this one from star, from statement number star, right? But let us find I inverse of G. So you know that I is identity function. So its inverse function is also an identity function. So I inverse of G is nothing but G itself since it is an identity function. Okay, so let me write here. We have some space. Okay, so G is nothing but I inverse G. So this G can be replaced by I inverse G. Let us do that. So therefore, I inverse G is, is I am replacing G by I inverse G since both are equal, is open in XD. It is open in I inverse G is open in XD. So we started with any open set in XD1 and we proved that it inverse image is open in XD. Therefore, I is identity. It's continuous function. So therefore, let me mention, therefore, I defined from XD to XD1 is continuous function. So in this way, we proved the first function is continuous function. Let us go to the second function. Now we have to prove this one is also continuous. Let me mention. Now, to prove that I defines from XD1 to XD is continuous function. Okay, so same technique I will use to prove I is continuous. I will take any open set in codomain and I will prove that its inverse image is open in domain. So let us take one open set. Let H be an open set in XD. I am taking any open set in codomain XD. But see our star says if you have any open set in XD, then it is open in XD1 also. So from star I can write here 
एच इज ओपन इन एक्स डी वन लेट मी मेन्शन फ्रॉम स्टार ओके बट सी लेट एस फाइंड आय इनवर्स ऑफ एच Actually, i is identity function, so that's why i inverse is also an identity function. So it is an identity function, so it will give the same set. I inverse h is equal to h. That means both are equal. So here also we can replace h by i inverse h. So therefore, i inverse h. I'm simply replacing h by i inverse h since both are equal. Is open. I'm writing the same thing in x d one. So that means. We started with h is open set in x d. So I have taken any open set in core domain, and finally we proved that its inverse image is open in x d one. That means it is open in domain. So the by definition of continuous function, we can say i is continuous. So let me mention. Therefore, therefore i defines from where to where x d one to x d is. continuous function so in this way we proved that both functions are continuous so now we have to prove the converse part since we have if and only statement so now i am going to assume these two maps are continuous maps and we are going to prove or we have to prove d and d1 are equivalent matrix okay just make a screenshot of it then we will go for the next part so now we are assuming that i from xd to xd1 and i from xd1 to xd both are continuous functions i means identity functions right and d and we have to prove that d and d1 are equivalent matrix equivalent matrix that means we have to prove any set is open in xd it implies that set is open in xd1 and if any set is open in xd1 then it is open in xd so let us start to do i'm starting with let G B an open set in X D. So I'm starting with any open set in X D. Now I have to prove that it is open in X D one also. But I'm using the given information or the, our assumption that our assumption is I from X D one to X D is continuous. So we have G is any open set in X D. That means G is open in core domain, and the function is continuous. So we have the definition of continuous function or the equivalent uh, definitions we have. That is, if you have any open set in do core domain, then its inverse image is open in domain. So the function is continuous. So therefore, what can we write? I inverse G is open in domain X D one, right? But i inverse g i inverse g i is identity function so its inverse image is also identity i inverse is also identity function so it will give the same set so therefore i inverse g is nothing but g so let me write it here therefore g is open in what we get it is open in x d1 x d1 so therefore let me write what we have got finally we started with any open set in xd g is open in xd we started with this statement and finally what we got g is open in xd1 g is open in xd1 so let me call it as statement number 1 so much important thing we have got so now we have to prove the second half that means i am going to consider any open set in xd1 and we have to prove that it is open in xd late H B an open set in X D one, right? But see, we have this information that I is a continuous function. So let us use, but I from X D. Okay, what we have X D to X D one is continuous. See, we have an open set H in X D one. and this function is continuous so by definition of continuity its inverse image inverse image of h is con uh, open in xd therefore i inverse h is open in xd but i means identity function so i inverse that is also identity function so therefore or let me mention here but i inverse h 
is equal to h itself since i is identity function so i inverse is also identity so both sets are equal so let us replace this i inverse h by h only therefore h is open in xt okay so let me write a conclusion so therefore we started with what h is open in xd h is let me write properly so h is open in xd okay just a minute h is open in xd implies finally what we got h is open in see h is open in x here h is open in xd1 and we proved h is open in xd so let me call it as 2 so if you have any open set in xd it is open in xd1 and if you have any open set in xd1 it is open in xd so let us combine 1 and 2 so we get d and d1 are equivalent matrix on x okay so i'm going to write that thing just make a screenshot of it then i will go further so i have written a conclusion there that is from 1 and 2 d and d1 are equivalent matrix on x okay so in this way we completed this example make a screenshot of it then we will stop thank you see you